the Facebook end. How are you doing, Scott? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thank you happy, for joining. Happy Tuesday. And to think for a minute, I don't know what day it is. Yeah, me either. I um, am pretty excited for this one. This one has to do with attribution AI. I know you guys over at Wicked are super hard and rolling out some uh, new AI features that mm -hmm. you guys are working hard on. Um, we're seeing everything. I mean, everywhere you go, ClickUp has AI. Everyone is feeding into the world of AI. So tell us a little bit about um, what you have going on. Uh, well, first of all, a little bit of background about yourself, who you are, I guess. And then we can kind sure. of dive into the whole uh, Attribution 3.0 discussion. Yes. Uh, my name is Scott DeGrossier, founder and CEO of Wicked Reports. We do marketing attribution, and we've been at this game for since 2015. So eight eight years. Eight and a half years. That's a long time. <laughs> Very long time to be doing attribution, let me tell you. Seeing it come in vogue, see it go away, see it be the enemy, the devil, now the friend. Yeah. And, um, you know, with iOS 17 and AI, it's two, in GA4, it's three big reasons to take another look at, AI, uh, at attribution because um, it's really, it's changed a lot of things, mostly for the good, but also made things more murky. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think, uh, you know, with AI, we've been working on something for six months. It's just, uh, it just launched uh, to customers yesterday. And so it was good timing here. And, you know, I noticed the AI, you know, I thought it was, you know, this, it's, it means artificial, not advanced is the key takeaway. Like anyone can throw a chat bot, an AI chat bot, which can do some cool stuff for the language. Uh, don't get me wrong, but to use AI for data analysis is a lot different because it is quirky. It takes a lot of human intervention and a lot of iterations to put the guardrails on it. So it doesn't just tell you really puzzling, puzzling things. Right. You mentioned one thing in there, and maybe we spend two minutes on this because I really haven't seen any, and even from my own knowledge, but a lot of documentation on it. But iOS 17 just did roll out. I just updated it yesterday. What is the big thing with iOS, iOS 17 that's going to affect attribution? So iOS 17 is blocking certain click IDs. In particular, Google's and Facebook's often get blocked. And it's very easy to set this up as a setting. It's not uh, to, to have this behavior block them across the board. So that means the data quality is going to go down in the platforms, which means they're further going to have to guess or model. Sometimes the model's being very accurate and sometimes the model's being, you know, totally pie in the sky stuff. But is they're that, losing the, go ahead. Is that, only, is that only through mail and messages? Because I thought, it, obviously it's only for iOS. People know that it's not Android. Yeah. My understanding was it was only for the messages app, mail app and Safari app, correct? Not like correct. Chrome and everything else that a lot of. Correct. And then there is a setting in there that makes it more restrictive that isn't that hard to find, but hopefully, you know, people are busy. It's not like everyone's going to be in there all crazy, you know, fine tuning all their settings. They probably already did that with iOS 14.5 if so. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that a third, there's just more complication or effort to get accurate data all over the place. So, at, you know, of course, I have a biased view as an attribution platform, but having a source of truth outside of, let's just keep it to Facebook, even though all platforms have the same challenge, their click ID is blocked. I know having their click ID makes them have a lot better tracking. They still know a ton about people. So it's not like they're blind, completely blind, but it just adds complexity and inaccuracy to the data. Got it. And... Um... I had another question that I forgot. What is your um? What is your anticipation of if people aren't using it? Because a lot of people don't use attribution platforms, mm -hmm. or they have them and they don't really fully use them. What do you think would be if you had to guess, based on your knowledge of the industry, what will be the loss of signal loss or attribution loss? Just people using platform only five ten percent. Yeah. I think 10 to 15 because you know there's a lot of iOS traffic and a lot of people are early adopters. But the early adopters to 17, as it rolls in, they'll lose more. And then Facebook will adjust. I'm sure it's, they've been working on it. So they won't have a, you know, you'll have to, you really got to pump up your conversion data to Facebook, which most advertisers are doing. But 
you got to get it up there. And then it begs the question, do you want to start getting top of the funnel data, not just sales data, but lead data so that Facebook knows um, your top of the funnel stuff's working. You know, it needs as much data as it can get. So, right. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let's jump into the world of AI. So tell us a little bit about what you guys have been working on, what you're doing um, and what you're bringing to the forefront. Sure. And I'm going to have some slides to show this as well, but what we found is that, you know, weak reports would always work if the data is accurate and if you know what you're looking for and then you take action on what it's telling you to do. But it required three th three hurdles. And so we looked at that, you know, we've been doing this a while and, and, you know, AI got me excited because it was a way to speed up the development cycle, we thought. Uh, and then it didn't actually speed anything up, but we still enabled AI, but we combined it with machine learning and then our expertise of doing this eight and a half years to take the whole point of attribution. One is to have a source of truth, but the other is in the data is places you're wasting money and places to spend more that's really doing well for you. And that's the whole point of it is to move your money around almost like a financial trader, maybe not a day trader, but more like a week trader, <laughs> trading every week, making new bets, depending on your cycles and a few other things. And so the what, what we hit upon that then took quite a while to build was if we can take your KPI ranges, such as I want to buy a customer between 20 and 40 bucks. If it's cheaper than 20, oh my God, spend unlimited. If it's greater than 40, I'm nervous. I might want to stop. And if it's within there, keep spending the same all day. As a, a simple example, we can do very complex ones now. We created this ability to uh, set you up with the KPIs you want or to recommend them based on your business model and our expertise, based on this better data that we have from your CRM, your cart, your subscription billing, new mm -hmm. customers versus repeat, things like that. And then on autopilot, just tell you what to do. So it's it's basically scans the data. We have 248 data points per click. So it's getting to be like, geez, if we, I'm gonna need a week long seminar to train people on all the filters and the settings. And I'm like, oh no, good news, bad. Good news, we have 248 data points. Bad news, we have 248 data points. Yeah. And so we hit upon this idea, and then now I've, I've been working on perfecting it. That uh, you know that will. We'll just tell you on a platter, which I'll have some screen shares to show you here in a few. What what power is that? Is that you know powered through OpenAI's API or is it through some other provider or what do you? So guys... it's through our it's our machine learning, and then we have our own internal AI models, and then we do use GPT 4s language models to help wordsmith it. Where they're really good is um, wordsmithing the correlations well. Got the it. Correlation is a math function you run when like there's 248 data points. And all of a sudden you're making more money and you're like, great. But then you might want to know, hey, why am I making more money? And then you don't want to go look at 248 data points. You just, yep. but you do, it, it's nice to know why your numbers are being hit. And so what we can do is correlate them all in a descending order. And then the AI, we, we give the AI guardrails of what to look at. And then it makes a nice couple English statements. So we're using the English, the, the language por portion of it to say, the reason why your CAC is, your ROAS is up is because your AOV is 30% higher on this particular ad set. That means you've targeted better people or you're up, they're taking more of your upsells. Could be your LTVs higher, but we correlate it so you have understanding because ideally you have action and understanding because then you can then apply it the next time and, and continually have compound wins is the whole. I mean, there's, I think there's some other platforms out there that have the same thing. What makes this different or better? So the, the data we're using, so we're starting from CART and CRM, and then we have attribu attribution models that we've been refining over eight years. We have all this legacy data of pure attribution wins and losses. So we know what works and doesn't with the data from doing it a long time. It's not enough to just throw a grid of data to the AI and say, make it, make everything great. It's the, the sauces in the models, the way you aggregate and bucket the clicks, the way you clean them coming in or don't based on just, you know, doing this forever. <laughs> Feels like forever. And so all that behind the scenes, um, basically high-end data engineering and transformation is just hidden from view. 
And then the models are automatically uh, selected or not based on what your business model is and what your goals are and what you've told us about how you choose to manage your, your data, how, what you're trying to get attribution, how you choose to look at it. We can set that on autopilot, but then also recommend based on our experience and you can turn those on or off or amplify them or mute them. So does this allow... Um, and we'll get into the screen sharing here in a little bit in the slides. Does this allow, um, does this eliminate the need for client reporting in any which way to lift that load through the AI? It's close. It's close. I'll show you. Uh, we, we feel, yes, you could just forward it to your client, but it, you know, client relationships, you know, we're our, our biggest growth channel is agencies and, Client relation, you know, clients are clients. They're wonderful and they're a pain in the ass. <laughs> Depends on the client. Sometimes, you know, they, seeing that uh, you need to cut your ad spend makes people, you know, makes certain clients get really touchy about that. They shouldn't because you, a good agency has to experiment and test and is going to, the only way to get more growth is you got to be testing new audiences that sometimes for sure aren't going to work out. But sometimes clients don't like to see that. On the flip okay. side, you can forward the nuggets where we're like, hey, delay the delayed ROAS or LTV when the repeat purchases come in, or you've turned something off, but you're still making money on it. You forward those because then it reminds the client, hey, you know, you sent that email out and you closed 30 grand. Well, it came from my ad clicks. Right. So the, it, it's, I, it's good enough, but you want to probably judiciously share it based on the relationship you have with the client. Be my Well, let's jump in and let's check it out. Um, sure. Let's look at what you spend all this time on. All right. So to me, when we looked at the AI and we looked at the machine learning, the humans, macro at marketing attribution, we thought that, you know, there was some winning habits. There's things you need. There's pitfalls to the, to the other solutions, meaning the non-attribution solutions. And then there's the habits that the, the people, you know, we see these same patterns over and over. And the accurate view of the customer journey, when people come to us, yeah, we want an accurate tracking is the number one thing. Yes, you need that for sure. That's just minimum table stakes. Mm -hmm. But then you need a less time consuming way to mine the data for insights. Trust me, we've known that because we keep, we don't need another report. You don't need yet another report because we almost created another one for something we're doing. I was like, oh my God, we have enough reports. Yep. We need the insights. But then from the insight, we need to know, you need to tie that to a business outcome. So you need all three. The accuracy, yes. Oh, look, Wicker Report shows me more or less ROAS, whatever. And then based on that, I now know something. And therefore, I'm going to do something that's going to drive a KPI that retains my client, increases ad spend, grows my brand, whatever. Yep. So the existing solutions, we covered them a lot at the beginning. but there's a lot of bias because they're, they're not incentivized. When's Google going to tell you, go, hey, you know what? Kill the ad spend and spend on meta. Performance Max is really grabbing all your repeat customers and claiming credit, which is common. Not always, but it's happening a fair amount. I'm not saying Performance Max can't work well. It's a lot of gears you got to pull in there. Meta, you know, with less data, I mean, the data is modeled, it's estimated, you know, there's not a lot of incentive for them to say, oh, go spend on Google. You know what? Facebook's not working out for you. Meta, whatever. I'm old school. I say Facebook. So there's, there's an incentive. Their incentive, their business model is not give you complete accuracy. It's just not. <laughs> um, and then GA4, uh, you know, it, it depends. You have a super sophisticated person in there mine, mining that, that can be powerful. But also, I'm going to show you one or two things where it, where a GA4 that's been set up by someone that knows what they're doing showed some pretty glaring um, glaring things. So here's here's an actual client's Google Analytics four. Now 147k in revenue, 17 in Facebook, mm -hmm. and and this was actually from clicking other. They had an other line, and that's where Facebook and Attentive and Wise Pops and Clavio got buried even though it was this because this client did over a half a million dollars in a given 30 days. Yep. Google Analytics shows here, 17. We actually showed 267K in the same time frame. And, and why is that? It's the longer attribution windows and it, it's the stitching of the journey. 
and it's the our incentive is what is most accurate and so this 60 percent here is part of the reason a big part of the reason there's also all sorts of things with the google analytics pixel the setup they the setup was accurately tracking 500 grand in revenue and it said facebook only did 17 and they're spending 30 something grand imagine you're that media buyer someone moved to ga4 hey what why why are we spending 30 grand on Facebook? Why are you spending a grand a day? I'm losing my shirt according to GA. You're this like, well, no, the attentives, the attentive closed because Facebook drove the attentive. And they're like, well, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> yep. So that that is a big flaw. This is like a e the e-com conversion model is looking last click. Now you can do some of their black box attribution to try and get a better view. You got to hope your client's willing to do that, first of all, which if they are, then that's a little better than the average. Uh, I don't use I mean, this. This actually is a screenshot of UA, but GA4 and UA are still yeah. processing data. I don't personally use GA4. It is number one to even try and get a report is like, you know, ridiculous. Compared <laughs> yes. to what it used to be. I, I can't even figure it out. I don't want to spend the time to figure it out. That's why I don't even look at it. The only thing that we use it for anymore, to be honest with you, and I used to, you know, like you said, I've been doing this 15 years, nine years ago, I used to live, eat and die by Google analytics. Like it was the source of truth. Um, still people, some yep. people still use it as a source of truth, but they're utilizing a broken last click model most of the time. Yep. Um, yep. But why I find it extremely clunky. Um, and we've talked about this before. I'm surprised that Google even has that rolled out the way that they do. Um, I know. Like I, I have trouble in there and my life is stats since I was 11 <laughs> and I'm 51, 40 years of doing stats. And I'm like, I, I don't love it. So I'll move on from that, but that's pretty clear. And then they're under, uh, this is meta. So here's, here's the thing with the meta. They got the seven day click. Well, a lot of Facebook takes longer than seven days to convert or you've driven great revenue that you close later on that then buys even more stuff and, and it all happened, let's just pretend looking at one of these, like the Lent, uh, you know, the Lent thing that shows four sales. Facebook has certain ways they're allowed to track and certain time windows they're allowed and ways that they're reconciling. And Facebook themselves showed only 12 sales, but we had 69. So on one hand, when they're doing short, shorter time frames, sometimes they'll be like crazy over optimistic, but the more polished you are with SMS and email conversions, the more... I mean, Facebook really works well with, with attentive, postscript, Clavio text, ver and email. Uh, it's a really complimentary channel, but Facebook themselves can't always report that. And this was a pretty, this was one day. Yeah. Do so, you know why, tech, do you know why technically, and I've gotten this, this ask a lot from clients and I've even tested it live. Why does GA and Facebook even if you do it in like you click the ad and you go and purchase and you watch in live view, why do they not play so nicely together? Is there something where the way that it's processing the data, something gets stripped or, I mean, I've had, I've just told them straight up. They're like, well, I don't see ever anything Facebook reporting, like even less than what you're showing. And you can go and you can do the test, but is there like, I feel like there's something with Facebook that's stripping something before it processes it or sends it or something extremely technological to where it causes that type of issue. Well, they have to think about things. So they get the pixel. So they, until, unless it's iOS 17, they're going to see the click ID and then, Oh, look, I have a click. And then the pixel fires on the purchase page. But then also you have your conversion API sending data. And then Facebook traffic cop has to have take time to run processes to traffic cop that. And frankly, uh, you know, they might have a million dollar a day spender. They're going to process their stuff first. I mean, obviously they have hundreds and hundreds, thousands of servers. But and then they're modeling the data, which means depending on how many, you know, whether or not they make decisions on whether or not they're going to show a certain number because they mm -hmm. don't want to. They don't want to show low results. <laughs> right. They may, they may have to. They're not going to, I'm not saying they're, they're running around lying to get your ad spend, but they've got a lot of competing pressures as to why and when they're going to show something rather than just showing the data. 
that's one that's one reason and then the other thing like if you came from a from the phone and you had idfa you'd opted out they can't they got to check to see where they can track you based on the different click path you came in that's because they're third party they're tracking you around the internet for all sorts of reasons and then selling that <laughs> as an option to be bid on we're yep. doing first party only inbound to the site and not tracking when you leave and only for that customer so it's a very different um, goal so mm. it's legal <laughs> but as to why they wouldn't i mean there's so much behind i mean every attribution platform might say a different thing on the same day even though we all doing the same thing there's all the decisions you make that stack up over time <laughs> that mean processing is different um so yeah i mean google that's not going to say hey go spend on social <laughs> so machine learning here's the ios so it strips out the click id and then this little setting over here privacy you can set it private browsing is the default like we mentioned with but you can say all browsing now this was a a beta version of this ideally when they rolled it out they won't have this all browsing but it's very easy to you check it and then this comes up you could say all browsing and then these click ids now how many people are going to do that is I'd, I'd be guessing i don't have any idea I wonder, the, I'm, just, I'm just going on my phone because I'm on iOS. Is that yeah. under like in settings? I would assume yeah. if you go to Safari. Yeah. So check because uh, that was what was in the alphas and the betas is where I grabbed this. So if it's still, you know, I didn't realize it had come out even officially come out yet. Yeah, it came out yesterday. I fraudulent website tracking, hide IP address, prevent cross site tracking. Is there a, so they might've even changed this. This was what it was um, July. I'm sure it's, it's good. I'm sure it's hidden somewhere. It's just a matter of wherever it is. <laughs> and so the, it takes signal loss into account. So on one hand, sometimes, you know, if you have a ton of throughput as someone who data models and machine learns and has created these algorithms, the more data I have, the more I can infer. Yep. So, but the, that being said, you know, like, you know, we even had some of our competitors, we had some defection from our competitors that rolled out AI for their attribution. And this very advanced Google marketer, John Moran was telling me he was in there and four of his ad sets or four of his Google ad groups, excuse me, all said 12.6 sales. <laughs> it's like, this is obviously infer, you know, made up tracking from the AI. Which, uh, Can you, quick question. If you use if you use a URL shortener and bury it within the URL shortener, my understanding is it does not remove those IDs. That's a great idea. Um, I know that URL shorteners, now, Facebook used to not allow them. Now I think they do again. They didn't used to because they were worried that people could send people to a different site than what they were showing. So that was the whole reason why, you know, I used to talk to those engineers a lot, fly out there and we're building certain stuff. And uh, that was why. But yeah, I mean, the URL shorteners are a way to track SMS and email because you put your, but now they're not, fortunately, iOS didn't, 17 didn't block UTMs. If they would have, you would need a shortener. Oh, I thought it did block UTMs. No, it decided they ended up not doing, not blocking UTMs. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so this was again, though, the, it's been gyrating the gossip online and what the beta showed. So now that it's out, out, <laughs> I think it re retest. Yeah, I think people just kind of got blindness from it because iOS 14 was just such an exab, exad, like it just exhausted everyone. And I think everybody has just, they've changed their models and like it's kind of like, hey, whatever happens, you know, mm -hmm. probably you don't see as much about iOS 17 as what you did 14.5. So correct. And so in things to keep in mind, like direct revenue in GA, you go in there, a direct is not it, what I mean by direct is not direct. Unless you're a household brand, like the guy who I'm going to show you is the guy whose data I always share my get main lobster guinea pig here for data. Like no one wakes up and says, oh my God, I'm going to go to getmainlobster.com today because he's not a household brand doing TV and branding like they he's got to earn that direct click through marketing. So when you see direct revenue, yes, someone went directly to the URL, but that means as a customer journey that you need to go mine because the bigger the direct number is, the more insight loss you have, which means you're not optimizing. If you're saying, oh, 
30% of my stuff's direct. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything with that. Well, yeah, if you, that's where attribution comes in and fills in that gap, of where do they come from? Right. And then same with last click revenue, not being last click. It was the last click, but there was, there was often stuff that drove them to that decision. Think of anything you just bought online. Like, was it really like you saw an ad and were just overcome and bought immediately? <laughs> it's not likely. It's possible. It happens, right. but it's, 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 I know it's pretty rare for me to do personally, but that's so relying on bad data is betting your business on a house of cards. It, it really is like, cause you can get, uh, cause your other competition that's going to be uh, bidding with good data is going to clean you out. Uh, mm -hmm. My great, uh, my best example of this on the cost to acquire the customer two to three higher. So if you don't know your LTV and your ROA is accurate, and then you're just managing based on CAC. And you say, oh man, my cost to acquire the customer has gone up to 50 bucks. I can only pay 40. I'm going to stop bidding. Now that may or may not be financially true based on your LTV, your recurring business, your repeat customers. But why customers cost more? Why do ad sets cost more per click and to acquire? Because the, ad, the audience often is more valuable. Facebook has all the demographic data. Trust me, Experian, Experian Credit Union sells all the income data. <laughs> well. They know who's got money and, and everyone wants to bid on people that have more money, just as a rudimentary example. So they're going to charge you more because they know those people spend more money. And that's mm -hmm. a very, the, the easiest way to understand why you can't, you've got to have your financials because Facebook and Google do, and look at how much money they have. They do this arbitrage because the people that say, oh, I'm going to, uh, the CAC here is too high. Well, not if your LTV is 20 times your CAC, you should spend that all day. But if you're just looking at your CAC and not looking at LTV as an example, then you're going to get burnt. Yep. And also the people that know this are buying them. So you keep going, oh, I got to find a new ad set. Oh, my creative stopped working. Or that your competition just bids you out and is printing money. That's one and that's, possibility. And that's what the AI is going to do, basically. The AI, which we're going to look at here in a little bit, I would imagine. Yep. Coming up. It's going to basically allow you to go through that data a lot easier. Correct. So I'm gonna, we already talked about this. Multi-touch, you know, we go back forever and go forward forever based on and stitch this complex journey. This is just six, a few touch points out of a ton of them <laughs> that we have. So you need to go do that. Mm -hmm. And then based on your, your, your ROAS targets, we can bucket it across the funnel, which is important because we look at your CRM and your cart so we can tell, hey, is this really cold traffic? Are you really buying new customers? Because a lot of times performance max is claiming credit for repeats <laughs> or yeah. claiming credit for email. Not always. But... And then scanning all these KPIs, what we're trying to do, let's get to the AI now. So here's a Wicked Reports account, right? And you got all, you got, this is just, you know, some of the fields we have. You know, I have this one up. Let, let me actually get it up. So I'm looking here and I'm like, you know, look at my general retargeting. Let's go into that one. No, where was the one I wanted to go into? I think retargeting was one. No, these are, these, some of these are sky high. Here's one, prospecting advantage. Well, I'm in here and I'm like, oh, four ROAS, that's good. But look at some of these. Here's a CAC of 124 bucks. I know that CAC is too high for this guy. The LTV over time, because he's, re he's, he's getting these repeat buyers, these people are worth four grand. Now, how do we know that? Well, we click on the sales, and then I'll get to how AI makes this all easy. And it's going to pull up who the customers are. Are they new or repeat? All the other stuff they bought. This is all analysis. You normally would have to do, oh, look, it's repeat customers spending money. And then I can go over and say, oh, Nicholas spent 200 bucks. Awesome. What else has he bought? And then you, you start this journey of mining stuff, which is cool and interesting, but you don't have time and you got to optimize. Oh, look at Mark Marion. I mean, that's crazy. But look at this person from 2015. Lobster tails, lobster tails. This is a dream customer. Look at all the purchases, but also all the clicks. It's nuts. And these are just the ones we have at, you know, if, if it's a useless click for various reasons, we don't even show it. So this person loves lobster. Great customer. So worth tons of money. And mm -hmm. this, this particular ad had them pull the trigger again. Because you say, wait a minute, 
uh, I, I'm trying to prospect here. Well, face, even though you have all your, you know, all your segmentation, right? Facebook showed it to them again for whatever reason. And it made them buy because you say, oh, I already have that customer. Why would I do that? Well, I don't know, but they didn't click for five months. Right. And lo and behold, they bought off Facebook 217 bucks. And that's LTV, uh, the customer LTV on this person, obviously quite high. Which is funny because, you know, from that five month period, why aren't they, yeah. did they, it'd be interesting to see, did they opt out of email? Like, do they just hate email, not want email? Like that's a common one. These brand, you know, you start getting these bigger brands that have, you know, 500,000 contacts. Well, a lot of them opt out. You got to re, re put them, retarget them to get them back in. So, whoop, yeah. so then you're. Well, and I know how this brand emails and they email like it's going out of style. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, wait a minute. Yeah. They emailed people are gonna get, you know, tired out. <laughs> so then you're like, wait a minute, what was this ad creative? Okay, prime for deals. So prime day. So a couple things. One, the CAC LTV was bananas here, but it was buried. I had to pick Facebook. I had to expand the, the campaign. I had to spin the ad set. And then I found a 15X. And then it is the primo deals. You know, it's not like, oh, it's a nice looking creative. So basically I'd say, you know, you're going to want to clone this creative and use it on the next holiday. Yep. Primed for deals might be, you know, whatever, Halloween deals and just use the same exact thing. <laughs> same thing. So anyway, getting back to our AI here. How does that work? Well, now we tell you, here it is advantage, advantage plus shopping. If the budget were increased 20% and KPIs are made the same, it would give you 19K in projected additional revenue. People that bought the lobster rolls have highest LTV. You can convert 10%. You click on it. It shows the graph. It shows where it came from, what the recommendation is. Lobster rolls have higher AOV, which leads to higher LTV. That's something that could take a lot of analysis. Then you got to go look at all the SKUs. And instead it's like, Let's just show them lobster roll deals. I've already got the ad creative that made 15 to one. Clone it, throw a lobster roll picture, done. <laughs> made money. So this whole scanning gets emailed to you. This is two that they got actually needs attention. The ROI is low or the CAC is higher. Now that's down at the ad set level here. So mixed in with all that high ROAS is some not so great stuff. And this one, increase the ad spend. Well, look at your ROI and your CAC. This is like crazy. And you got to think about like, a, go ahead. I was going to say, is this do ad level two or only ad set level? Yeah, it does any level. Okay. And it does any, I'm showing Facebook because the problem is so severe. Because <laughs> people come in with like, you know, they'll have a hundred K in budget maybe, and they'll have like 30 campaigns and they'll have like 50 ad sets. And, and I'll be like, well, good news. We have a ton of data. I don't know how you're going to find the time to go through all this. How do you even have fun time to create? It must be creating it with automation. I don't know, but this is where we automate the optimization. This is a, I mean, anyone would, anyone would, their cat goal is 50. It's 26. This ROI is too high. So instead of me showing how you're going to get there with training and blah, 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 and blah, 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 we're just going to find it and tell you, and then you just go do it. And eventually maybe we'll just do it for you. But right now, you know, we've got our hands full just doing this. <laughs> yeah. So this is where AI comes in. It, it, it wordsmiths this and wordsmiths uh, this other, whoop, correlates all this, you know? So we have all these. You just go through it. And eventually maybe we'll just Sorry about that. I was going to answer this guy on this chat. He's asking a question. Sure. The video. And so these are not as, as attractive, but this is where some of the secret sauce comes in. So when you come in this pre-flight, pre -opt, I don't know, I don't have a good name for it yet, but you, we need to know these things because like there's trend. Oh, let me go here to here and then I'll show you again. Brian, I just answered your question. They do have a Shopify integration. So they do oh, integrate yeah. directly with Shopify pretty easy. So think about this, right? You've got trends. You've got how much view you've got, whether or not you should do it, whether you're like, you want your, at your dollars to reconcile. You've got time windows. You've got all these settings that will help you set up, which then is what leads to, then once these are all set up, you know, there's all these data points of trend and all that. Okay. It's going to load up, taking a second here. Well, let me, but 
by letting us know how these are things where if you said, oh, I'm just going to set this up in GA, it'll be fine. We need to know how long your ad should run. We need to know for each metric, how long you want of performance, what ad spend is meaningful to you, because this number gyrates heavy. Some people, oh, if it's not, if it's under a grand, I don't care. Some people like you crazy. I want to adjust every hundred dollars campaign ad set or ad. And then we want to know the bounds. And this is where no one's talking about this. And we realized from working on this for six months, this is really important. That one was really CAC was 25 to 50, this guy. What does this mean right here? It means if, if the CAC's between 25 and 50, you don't want to be bothered. You're just going to keep spending the same amount, keep collecting money, driving the baseline revenue that pays the bills. When the CAC is above 50, that's not good. Look at the trend. Is it trending out of control? Is something happening? Do I need to go cut this ad spend, stop spending, put new creative? That's when we put it on your radar. And if it's below 25, it means, oh my God, I'm printing money. I need to spend more money here because this is my 80-20 rule where 20% is where you drive most of your rev. That's where I want to really blow it out. And you can combine, these are just a couple examples, new customers, new subscriptions, we have, you know, unlimited amount of fields almost you can do this on. But we set up these ranges with you and then we scan everything and then we use the trend data. So instead of coming in here and being like, oh, okay, well, let me look at this one. Well, the trend's up. So even though my CAC was, so here's, I got lucky here. Your CAC goal was 50. So you're like, oh no, I'm 54. I want to cut the ad spend. No, you don't. You raised your spend and your revenue's gone through the roof, and your ROAS is up. So even though your CAC is higher, it's come down 34 bucks. The yeah. algorithm is working here. Don't touch this thing. It's trending really well. And yeah. so that is something that would be very advanced to get people to know, or it had to be some data gearhead like myself that would do this for the client. And now it's just going to be on a platter. All that analysis is just going to tell you, hey, I know your CAC's high, but calm down. It, it's trending really well. Just monitor it. And then right. if, it, if the trend goes against you, then we'll tell you. But in this case, uh -huh. you know, hang in there. Uh, Brian, so they don't have an, <clears throat> I think what you're looking for is just an app that you hit install and then installs it and then just everything works. It's a little bit more complex than that. Wicked does give you a person that helps you onboard. So you do set up, a. it's a custom app essentially. Um integrates through that and then utilize UTM tracking and, st and stuff. It's not difficult to set up. I'm you still have your onboarding specialist, right, Scott, that help yep. onboard, help fully help you set it up. So it's not just you click and install an app and then you're up and running. Um, to get And really, honestly, there isn't an, an app, any app like that. And if it is, it's not probably worth even looking at because this is a, a lot more complex to be able to get this kind of uh, set up. So. Tracking has gotten more complicated, but we've been doing it over. So now our team, instead of having to help train you on how to get to this point in time, hey, I know your CAC is higher, but the trend's good and your revenue's way up. So we don't want you to kill it. That is something people be like, oh man, how am I, when the hell am I going to friggin' drill down to the ads and do that? Or they'd be all psych and then they wouldn't necessarily do it. Of course, we have people that have been paying us for seven years. So people do get there, but instead it's just going to be like, boop, this, and oh. this, this is already live right here. This is live. It started yesterday and we have, you know, so our intake process now, our team just focuses on getting your accurate data, helping you integrate, whatever. Some Shopify is mega easy. It's like, so that's not even worth talking about. It takes like a minute. But then the, the getting your system right, or if you don't know what your system is, we can help you get there. We can have recommendations of what we think it should be. You know, you got it, but you could, ideally you come to us already with the idea of, well, my CAC needs to be around here or my ROAS is this or I'm doing CAC to LTV. That's usually the standard strategies. And then a really cool thing is we can do these based on naming conventions. So for example, if you're prospecting, you need to hit a three, but you're retargeting, you know, let's look at this guy. His retargeting's through the roof, right? Retargeting should be higher than prospecting. 
So rather than just have some frankly dumb idea where it's like, oh, my CAC is always going to be 50. No, prospecting should be higher and retargeting should be great. And then your brand should be the cheapest. Yep. And we can do that based on, well, if campaign name equals prospecting in ROAS above three, that's good. <laughs> if retargeting in cat ROAS is uh, three, that's bad um, as an example. So it yep. can be very sophisticated uh, by doing, you know, top and then retargeting and then brand being all separate metric goals using your naming conventions, which is kind of kind of slick. Yep. Are you guys doing shops info? You guys are pulling in shop purchases, correct? We pull in shop, yes. Uh, so these are all the columns. I just have, I like this view, so I leave it, but we've got, you know, we can break it down by, again, the 248 data points here, but let me just go and do, whoop. yeah, so Meta, let's see if he, I think he, you know what, I don't know if this guy does shop or not, let's find out. Uh, meta, meta, purchase. meta add to cart meta website purchases uh, was meta in there yeah so meta purchases it looks like you got one <laughs> and then here's what here's what facebook says 256 380 let's see what we say interesting so 380 so they were off 70 you know i can i can move these around let me uh Anyway, I can move them around if we want to compare, but so it's off 458 and the longer a campaign runs, the more off and the quicker it is and the lower price your item and the quicker the sales cycle and the first in your, the shorter the time frame. Yep. Facebook isn't terrible. It's not like it's way, way outlandishly off, but anything over time, we always show more like uh, literally, I don't know. I can't recall ever not showing more than Facebook over time. Yep. But initially in a really tight frame, no, it'll, it'll be sometimes really close. Um, no, so, well, I mean, 269, 216. So is that a big deal? I mean, I think so. It's 20 something percent less revenue, which means 20 something percent less ROAS, which means you may not continue to, you know, it might mean you don't hit your target or, or you don't spend more. Yeah, and then we get the add to carts here, which is kind of nice. You know what? They're pretty good at add to cart. Which is weird. I think they maybe if you could have purchased tracking. Um, so I mean, that's that's kind of what I had. I'm open to questions, but uh, you know, here's some examples for. Uh, we just help someone with a tripwire. Tripwire meaning an initial cheap product, and then you want the bigger sale down the road. And this person was like, "I got a two week sales cycle, then to buy. I don't know. It was like a twenty dollar thing, twenty seven bucks, some weird number. And then I'm really trying to see who is going to upsell and buy my two grand something or other." You know, a lot of people got these models because they work. And so we create these rules in the background, which then lead to these targets. Because when you're in here, we're going to have dramatically more revenue if you do any upsell or tripwire model or recurring subscription. You see, we have new repeat. We all, he doesn't have many subscriptions. We also have subscriptions. So if this prospecting got a bunch of uh, new, subs, new subs, and then they all recur 30 days later, we'll be able to give you that credit, which Facebook's completely blind to, mm. which is a massive LTV difference. So I don't, you know, it's puzzling, but that's what they do. <laughs> so, I mean, that's what, I, that's what I have for you today, Justin. Any other questions or comments or? No, I think it's thoughts? really, really cool, especially for a lot of people that I talk to just as well. Wicked has so much information. It's so overwhelming. You know, for the more beginner marketers, I think this is awesome because you guys do have your system is a lot more complex, but it's to me, it's a lot more complex in a good scenario that allows you to dive deeper and look into the data. And I know you guys have been simplifying that over the years, which has been awesome. And I know this this helps those people that may not be an advanced marketer that don't know data, what they're looking at are as advanced as what you are, what I am, what other people are. This kind of basically tells them like, hey, you need to look at this. You need to do this. And it, it uh, yeah, it makes, it realizes the promise of attribution and it makes you a data-driven marketer because it is going to, and it forces you, it, it, it acts as a natural way of putting you in the mindset of, hey, what are my KPIs and decisions? And then we can run multiple recommendation models and you can see, and then be a lot more strategic. 
yep. without having to spend the time. You can spend the time thinking about your rules and then the time acting or not acting when these spit back out at you. But you right. don't have to go in here and be like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> you know, because like, look at all the, I mean, we got this and then we got it down literally to the ad level, which to me was super awesome. But I mean, then you got like, it's just a lot to mine. I mean, it's always been that way. So finally we've made it, uh, the promise of the data can be achieved in my opinion, which is, yep. which is nice. Yep. All this. No, that makes cool. sense. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions. Kind of got lost in all this and was, uh, is this a replacement for high roast and triple L? Absolutely. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've Without used, doubt. yeah, we've used all of them. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it, it does replace those. And I think it's even, Based on your setup, it could potentially be cheaper. So it depends. I know high roast, you know, their the model changes a lot on pricing. So I haven't kept up with the latest. I know they've been running a 50% the off. Day. They've been running a 50% off sale for years. That's <laughs> the last month you can get. <laughs> Godfather offer. Prices are gonna go up. I've had I've been retargeted that more times. I'm like, geez, yeah. obviously must work pretty well for them. Or he's a good marketer. <laughs> he's a good marketer. Yes. So yeah, it, it does. Um, there's also a lot of other ones out there. I know there's a, there's a couple that I've even played around with and they're just not near as, they're very, very basic. It looks like they were launched out of a garage. Um, so. I mean, experience, I mean, just think about anything that you interact with in life. How important is experience? <laughs> Cause you've got, you've, it seems not, you know, you come in, someone comes in and go, oh, I just got to track the, the UTMs and match them up and spit out some data. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Yep. But that's how it first seemed to me when I first started, you know? So, I mean, if you value experience, you know, then, then we're the choice. And if you don't, then hopefully we still are anyway. But and Eric, if you want a deal, we have a deal that I can set you up with. Um, just shoot me a direct message um, and I can talk to you more about that and you can get a discount. So, yep. All right, well, Scott. Thanks a lot for having me on. Appreciate it, uh, Justin. It's how does easy. how do people? Oh, well, I got a mower going by here. One second. Okay. Uh, how do people um, reach out to you if they have questions or they want to book something, set something up? What's the best? So way? to book something right from our website, wickerreports.com, you can book a call right off the website. Is ideal. Um, you can also just tag me. I'm in the Ad Leaks group, as is Melissa on our team, who's also my wife. <laughs> There's, uh, you know, more than just me and my wife working for Wicked Reports, but uh, so you can ta tag Scott or tag Justin, who will then tag us. And then we have a Slack with Justin. He can ping me to give you some TLC. All right. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate your time. Uh, awesome updates. What's on the roadmap for near future? Um, well, we're still looking to even simplify the UX more, and then we're going to start driving, uh, insights from your cart and crm because we see a lot of interesting data in there such as product SKUs and bundles and a lot of stuff that people spend a lot of time mining cohort reports trying to get which all our cohorts are mine have all this great data we didn't get to that but tons of cool stuff to learn like what's the first SKU that drives the most ltv that's a cool thing to know so we know all these so we're working on a way to just that feed i showed you just put those in the feed so you'll just learn about your customers as well. That's our next effort. Nice. Okay. Well, it was always great to chat with you. Yeah. Um, we'll do it probably again soon, I'm sure. Cool. So. Thanks, Justin. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. guys. Take Appreciate care. It. Bye. Bye.